Good evening. It is 7.01 on Thursday, November 9th. This is the Menden Conservation Commission. I am the chair. My name is Carl Hummel. We'll now introduce the rest of ourselves. Yeah, Whiting. I can handle it. Bob Sweet. And Bob Sweet is remote. Um, uh, while we're waiting, I got a text from Susan that she will be arriving shortly. Well, that's really distracting. <laughs> I'm going to stop the transcription stuff. So uh, I'll, I'll go through some other stuff first. I'll go through building permits re under item 13, review any activity since last meeting. Uh, the commercial permit 23-12 is a carryover. Uh, it was reported two weeks ago. There's been no attachments added to the building permit and no response from the applicant. So I'm just going to carry this forward until uh, we determine what the resolution of that is. Which one is it? This is uh, between Royal Fireside and Lou's Lawnmower on uh, on Uxbridge what's, Road. What's the problem? Uh, they are interested in building a road, and I can bring up a road. I thought it was a fence. Yeah, sorry. Yes, they want to build a fence somewhere in here. And if you look at the 100 foot, 100 feet, if they're going to the very front of the lot, they're going to be within a buffer zone. So I'm. And where, where, where is the, where is the wetland? It's not a wetland. It's the it's Rock Meadow Brook. Right there on the other side of the street. Right, but if you look down here, they're just about 100 feet. So I've asked but for. I don't see an impact on the wetland. I'm, up across. I'm, I'm just. This is just a building permit hold. If they come back and say no impact and we do a site visit and we're we the agree. to say impact or no impact. Yep, but they what? need to come back with if, if they come back and say the fence is starting further back outside, then we then we can release it. Otherwise, we ask them to to talk with us about it. Vote on that. No, it's just a building permit hold. This is something I don't, I don't see a problem. And when I, I get more, I, I go by that twice a day in the okay. morning and at night. I don't see a problem in between Lou's shop and the fire to put up a fence, right? To put up a fence. Right. <clears throat> There's a wetland, i.e., stream across the street. So you got Route 16 as the as long as they're not taking down a big tree that's on that line to put the fence, that would be my only concern. But that, that's other than that. I be so, well, well, yep. If you um, were to go there and actually get out and look, you may find that there's some kind of intermittent stream or something like that that goes in front of Lou's. I'm basically waiting until the building permit process moves forward. They have not done all of the other attachments that usually happen with the building permit in terms of the site plan or any other activity. So I'm just going to keep it on hold until they do more information. OK, we have uh, two more members who have arrived. Could, Peter, could you introduce yourself? At some point, these will be getting transcribed, and I'm hoping whoever transcribed will be able to attach names to everything. Bob, well, what what makes you say there's a you think there's an intermittent stream there? Because I actually spoke with Lou in the past, and he had told me that it comes from behind his property and goes in front, and he got a hard time about it in the past. The, in front of the house, along the road, or between along the, the two road? Feet? Yes. Bob, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not the same issue. Uh, Route 16 up your neck of the woods. You got a stream tight along the road on the other way, but the water on the north side's got to be able to get across, and sometimes it goes alongside. You know, drainage is what it is. Right. It could could be a drainage swale. Yeah. Worth taking a look at. I'll, all I'm saying. I think I'll get out and take a look at it. This is just a building permit hold. They haven't requested anything yet. This is the state, the same hold I'm putting on any time that there's an act 
and, and as you'll see with the rest of the ones I'm going through, they're clearly not jurisdiction. So uh, building permit RES-23314, Maori, building permit is to build a storage chest. You can see there's nothing around, so that one's not jurisdictional. 28 Ralston Farm Drive, uh, that is jurisdictional. It's part of the Wetland Springs that Fred Lapham comes in and talks to us about. The lot itself is all upland and uh, there is some erosion on the property, but that's going to get monitored is by Deshang and we'll be looking at it uh, as as we go through. Uh, 69 Blackstone, again, there's a wetland here, but you can look at the, the little measure here and say that uh, it is not jurisdictional. At this one, they're going to be building a house probably where this lot is. And one that came in uh, since Tuesday that's not on the agenda, RES 23339 George Street. They're going to be adding a family room right about here. And again, uh, there's far, far away from uh, the stream down here. So that is also not jurisdictional. So now that we have uh, uh, everyone here I'm expecting, uh, we'll go on to the next thing that we have, we have someone here for. Lake Nipmuc water level. Allow opportunity for further input about the water level and take any action required. We discussed this matter two weeks ago and we had a report that the water level was high. And then we uh, also heard from Bob reached out to the Lake, uh, Lake Nipmuc Association. It wasn't. I'm basically going to listen to whoever in the public shows up and says one way or the other. So could you come on up to the mic and, and talk? Sure. Billy Palmer, I live at 8 Kinsley Lane. I've lived on the lake for 40 years now. Um, the lake level. Pull, pull the mic towards the you. The lake Basically. level um, from then till now has been higher than it's ever been. So. Has it been high all summer long? Oh, uh, it's this, this, yeah, because usually they did some trapping and it would go down. We got a lot of rain this year. Yeah, it was. So it didn't really go down that much. It was all right, but not where it should be. So I, we're looking at this. Uh, yep. Yeah, this so, is what we saw too. So <laughs> that with the orange fences and that little wall. Yeah. Back in the day, and I and I understand it's never going to happen again. I used to have tension the beach. There. I'm not exaggerating. You can almost see on the right hand side if you look down that bottom corner. That's another wall down the bottom right hand corner. Oh, yeah. Yep, right there. You could walk. That wall is probably 50 feet. You could walk halfway down that wall in sand. Now, I don't expect it to ever be like that because it's such a mess out in the, in the, in the waterway out in the stream that it'll never be like that again. It's so overgrown. Um, but the problem is, go back to that picture. Yep. If you, so I would have 10 feet of beach there, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. The problem is, if you don't take care of it now, by the middle of the winter, you see where my dock is with the blue cover? Yeah. To the, with the, where the legs are? You've taken them out there, so that's, that's where, where they done. sit all winter. Yeah. The water will be to the, to the right. And then iced up and that'll be all in the water. That's my property. It'll be completely submerged. I think that's like up a foot and a half. Oh, God. Right? I'm it's... telling you. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't wait, man. Because if the water comes up, they build the dam. The water comes up, they build the dam. The water comes they, they don't stop. So the only thing you could do is trap them. And, and all I ask for is to trap in the spring and in the fall. This is a and picture. We try to control. we try to control it. And breaching the dam, I have no problem, but I just, you know, 
I don't like to go out there and waste my time because those things they'll build them right back up. They're, yes, eight hours later, yeah. keep you busy. Yeah, yeah. Eight, hours, eight hours later, they're, they're, it's it's built. When when I when when Alan uh, from the when Alan went, went out there, she, he got four. He got, but they were all juveniles. He right. explicitly said he was unable to get the adults. So. Well, he's he's gone a couple of years now, so he's you know. But you know, once you once that one adult beaver springs that trap, and if you don't catch it, he ain't going back near that trap. He's not gonna. He's he's educated, and he ain't going back there. So you know, you got a couple little ones, maybe maybe one other adult. That's it. So how does it work? Before we've had complaints or an emergency. Can I just can I just say a couple of things? This, the situation down the lake is you got some people it doesn't affect, and then some people it does affect. Nobody wants to come here and deal with you guys. I don't know why, but it affects me the most, okay? Because I've been dealing with it since they changed the laws about trapping. I've been dealing with it that, that next year. I've been out there breaching that dam for 15 years, okay? It's a pain in the ass. Um, some people like it high. I like it high because... Yeah, you can get over to the, the in the summer when you're using right. You got your boat, but some people don't like it. I I don't. I just want it in the middle. That's all I'm asking for is in the middle. Make everybody happy. Um, some people don't have a beach; they have walls. But when the water gets high, it undermines their walls. Okay. So the question before us tonight is: Should we? Uh, the, 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 what we will be voting on at the end of the, dis the discussion is whether or not we should engage Alan to go out and try and do some more trapping for the next month or so. Why don't we? Excuse me, Carl. Yeah. I believe that uh, Jonathan Dudley. Jonathan Dudley is um, he, he's been uh, in search of uh, a permit for uh, breaking up some of those beaver dams. So. That may be one of the uh, areas that he's considering uh, looking into fixing. You, well, you, you could do all you want, but it, it's just not going to matter. The only way to do it is a trap. What's it take to investigate uh, these? Uh, I believe they're called beaver, beaver deceivers. We 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 did that last year and two. We we have information from Ann Mazar that a specialist who of installing them went out and said it it wasn't good. And we didn't have the right angle. Uh, I thought we were going to discuss about the water level, putting a monitor on the water level, so we have at least a baseline. Yes, I've asked uh, Bob to work with the Lake Nipmuc Association and Dan Byer to get that, but that's going to happen over the winter. The, the question is, do we do something immediately? That level. My question is. So excuse Dan me. and I had talked about that today, Carl. OK, is there We're, uh, gonna is reach there out a to a control structure? No, there's no. Yeah. Yes, there is, but that's it's wide open. It's been wide open for because there's no planks put in. It yeah, they took them out to try to when this fall started. That's what we tried. The to dam do. is below. Below that, yeah, the the the, the boards, you know, the dam, the the dikes down here, and the 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 um the dam is between the pond and the dike. There's actually two. Beavers There's two that I know. Between of. the dam and the dike, between. Yeah. I just want to say one thing. The problem is, like Billy's saying, on the back side of the lake is is Hox's land, yeah. and it's a big sea swamp, and it's flooded the whole swamp boat. It's not even getting to the dam because it's flooding that hole. He used to cut firewood in there. He can't even walk in there. Well, five feet of water. So the dam is quite a ways down from what I would call the end of the lake, right? It, yeah, yeah, it's no, it's, it's, it's about a, it's, it's probably it's a, hike. a quarter away in off the lake, close to a half. It's in it's in there. There's two separate ones. It's, they started at one, yeah, no, and then they, they made there. another one. And let me tell you, to find them, I, it took me a long time to find them. You know, waders up to my chest in water, and okay, if someone comes to us asking for help on getting a permit to demolish beaver dams. Yes, have them come up and we'll talk with them about it. I sense you, it, that should include the owner of the land on whose dam it is. Right? Yeah. That they, because we could do it maybe as a board of health if it was somebody's septic system. Well, you, you got septic system down there. Well, so per, per ten, that's the one who instigates it or, you know, it's I, be, I, uh, I, I, our, our second issue, 
he has to leave at 7.30, so I want to move this along. It's temporary. It'll it'll work for th it'll work for three days. I have this issue on. It won't work for three days. It'll work okay. one day. That's it. Okay, then. I water running. Excuse me, Carl. Then, then my beavers are lazier than yours. Yes, yes, Bob. Um, why don't you suggest to Billy that he talk to Jonathan Dudley and see whether the schedule is for beaver dam removal? Because I, it's a. I don't. I think it's you're wasting your time. I think you're better off to have Alan in there for a couple of days and trap. Agreed, I, but it's not going to solve the problem until you get rid of the dam. Well, you, well, do, you don't want to get rid of the dam until you get rid of the beavers. You need to do both of them. Right. The pro the other problem is that the dam is about 15 minutes to a half hour slog to get to it. Is is my understanding? Oh, yeah. So so the question uh, that I wanted hold in there now. <laughs> so the question I want to discuss tonight is, do we authorize uh, Alan to go out and trap beavers, and and Why pay for it? Be Alan. Can we get two or three guys to help oh. out? Is he, was, he the only guy in, in this, this? He knows the area. He's done it in the past. Is he the only guy that in this area that hunts. He needs to be. He, well, you got to be a licensed trapper. Now. I know Alan. I like yeah, him. No, no. You said to be a licensed trapper. Right. It's a lot of work. The town used to have a guy, Rick Merchant, that used to come out from Western Mass. He just doesn't have the. He don't want to come out here anymore. He's also on our billing list. So okay. w if we want to entertain having our new agent, and I will talk about that later, go out and get competitive bids, we would. But again, for, for this, for the immediate action, I would go and, and work with, give oh, Alan a call. That's a good point. We'll talk about that when we talk about our administrative assistant. One of the things I think we should do is start reaching out to our state representatives to reach out to the Army Corps of Engineers and to the Mass Fisheries and Wildlife, and we explain to them this has been an ongoing problem for 20 years. You, we've talked, we've talked about this, and you were there probably six, seven years ago. I believe we were downstairs. We talked about this, and everybody was like, "Yeah, yeah," but nobody really. I mean, I'm willing to help because it's my property, but it's you know. I, I took the course. I, I was I can be a licensed traveler, but it's so much work and I don't have the time to deal with it. <laughs> and Alan does it because he likes the fur, right? And he, he likes the retire. fur. He, he likes the he likes the caster. I mean, and it's you know, it's he likes it. I don't know. I, so. so they don't relocate them. They just no, it doesn't really do anything. You can't really you can't re relocate it's cool. it against the law. Oh, he's it's against the law to relocate. You okay, so so any other input from people on the committee on whether they believe it is worthwhile trapping beavers in the next couple of weeks? I think we should get a water level and monitor that and see where it ends up. So I don't really want to kill any beavers. They actually create habitat. Yeah, they also wreck ecology. people's property too. So yes, there's the habitat. Yeah, there it is. It's the the thing is. The water level. Why why you want to worry about the water level now? It's way too high. We've had a lot of rain this year. Uh, it would be nice to measure the monitor and monitor the water level of the lake regardless. And, so and I, you I, don't do anything about this now. The water level come this winter will be up over my grass by. by right, feet. but the water level changes in the winter anyway, regardless if you have never used or to not. be as high as it is now. We've never had this much rain. You're not understanding. I do when understand. I, when I when you get ice down in that lake freezing, you get snow and my it's up to my shed and my grass is underwater and the fertilizer is going into the water. And then the weeds then don't grow. use fertilizer. Then the, weed, then the, the weeds, water. Then the weeds grow. What's that? <laughs> then maybe not use so much fertilizer. I think we're off topic. Doing it to the water. Monitored by the U.S. Carl, I'll make a motion to uh, continue this with a, with a with authorization to travel. Okay. Is there a second to the motion to authorize Alan to do some trapping? I'll second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion from the board? That they haven't already said. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Bob, aye. Peter, aye. Opposed? Okay. Like Leah, you are you opposed? I, you, guys, you guys have a quorum already, so I don't have to do anything. Well, you can then then you can abstain. You can express your negativity <laughs> towards it and say no. Well, I mean, oh, I don't like it. Okay, no. Well, well, we need to change the law that they relo relocate. 
Sorry. The problem is the problem is that the people voted for trapping laws, and this is why we're at where we're at. Okay. Okay. It would never be like this if people didn't vote against it. All okay, right. so 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 the motion passes, and I will I yeah, contact you Alan. At your house? You got shrubs at your house? Is I don't have deer problems. I have dogs. They keep the deer out. Um, yeah, we have some varieties. Yeah, they eat the well, they don't. They eat a little bit of varieties, but um, if people didn't hunt, you'd have them all over the place, and you'd be running them over your car and every through your window. Okay, so so we can get on to the next action. Right. I will contact Alan, and and he and I will give him your phone number in case he wants to talk to you about uh, locations and stuff. Don't give up. No, no. Again, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna push. This. You let me get. get I'll, I'll be in touch with you. All right. I get in touch with you. I mean, All right. I'm state force filled beavers. I think I'll take a few more. Okay, come on up. Mark, you wanna come on up? Hi, I'm Mark Benugin, uh 43 Quisset Road, Menden, Mass. I own Cedar Hill Farm. Okay, uh, we went out and conducted a site visit uh, with a number of us. I wrote, I did a write up of that. Um, there's also a draft write up from Meta Comet. They use this as an opportunity for their 2023 survey. It's only a draft, so I'm not sharing it at this point. Uh, I didn't even look at it much. Uh, we identified a number area, number of areas of concern. There, there, there used to be a stone wall along here, uh, and there was a uh, boundary marker here, and there is now a shed in this area here. Those were the three major issues uh, that they identified. Um, the in in my write up, I identified a number of action items that we can take that if, assuming we have an agent, they would be able to work with him in the future. Um, the reason why the boundary markers was removed is because it was interfering with your cattle. It was wound. It wounded one of them and, well, and it was it mostly wrecked, mowing. Wrecked one of your mowers. Tapes, uh, so it sounds like a good uh, alternative would be to resurvey, figure out where to draw to, to put put it back and put a nice solid piece of iron and f get it flush so that we would be able to find that in the future. Uh, so uh, that's what we can work on in that. Uh, once that marker is back in place, well, then we would be able to look and see whether your your new outbuilding is over the property line or not, because this one is still in place and we would be able to just take a look there. I thought we already discussed that when you were there two Sundays ago that it was getting pushed back from Metacoma that they think that the they think that we were looking down here and the actual property line would be up here. So uh, what may end up happening is we will have someone go out and do another survey to determine where exactly to pound the new thing flush to the ground. OK, so if somebody pounds a new one and it's not the same spot it was and it is over, what's, what's that mean? We'll talk about that when the time comes. Well, it's going to be on our cost, I guess, to hire a surveyor. You've got to give them permission to reset that yeah. point. And that so, should be within uh, a tenth of a foot. Yeah. What I don't understand is that's not property lines, what you're looking at. That's a uh, building envelope. It's Why would the, you it's, waste the money to? I can't because, build houses there anyhow. Because, I mean, because if your structure extends over that line, that that's in the conservation restriction area is outside of the envelope. Yeah, but I, I can still build whatever I want all over my land. It just can't be houses. If you look at my restrictions, I can put bonds anywhere i could put a bond in the middle of my Let me field up you for a minute key word right there is his restriction did we ever get a copy of the restrictions mm -hmm. yeah i have can i have I, a copy of them could okay. you get it to me because so, i haven't seen it but to so just, what just what the, basically what the, i i cannot build i cannot develop my land i lost the development right. rights so i can't put a subdivision in there or six houses right 
but I can build any kind of farm dwelling I want, whether it be That's what I garage, want. barn, lean-to, yeah. tractor shed, doesn't matter. The four acres that are in my so-called building envelope that Ann Mazar gave me, that's my house building envelope. So that's where I could put septic systems, house, you know, stuff to live in, in, inside there. That's what that building envelope. On our SharePoint oh. site is the text of the conservation restriction that is now part of the registry of deeds thing. And uh, I can, I'll send you the link uh, tomorrow or over the weekend. So this right here, oh, can you send me that in attachment? And I'll... He did send it a while ago. Oh, oh, I can send it as an attachment, sure. But right. then I this... print it out. Yep. Right, because the question I have is even That's within it. the building envelope, there, there are stone walls. And so the stone walls got got biffed, and you're saying, hey, you got to biff the walls because that's in your office. Then your that's, I just didn't know but whether that's. That's not that's... the reason why I biffed them. I no, biffed I, them I, the tree because you need a flat, well. But that's the real reason why I took them out. But, but any, anyhow, I mean, that's my building envelope. And then why they put my building envelope, whoever did that, in wetlands is beyond me. Why would you give somebody a building envelope if it's already in wetlands? Just doesn't make any sense. No one, I think, gave it a much whole lot of thought, right? And they it did. It was new to the town, and it, ha and yeah, it and, is what it is. And, and they had to do it in three months. They they were up again. It was snow on the ground. Three month deadline. Yes, and and Which, and again, leads to another topic that we could spend hours talking about. Right, but I keep it. What, what, <laughs> why are we buying up land that's a wetland that can't be built on anyway? And, and taking that land out of the tax so why would we buy this i would say we bought this because of the beauty of the stone walls and that's why i'm a little harder on you on stone yeah. walls because i because whether they're internal walls or external walls it was for the beauty of the agriculture so, uh, that's i personally like stone walls and if you don't believe me ask me why i weed whack them miles of stone walls and spray them but why <laughs> i got a lot weed, better things to be doing weed whack those four four um settings then because they're in the middle of my field so when i go cut the hay i can't see them the hay's this tall and next thing you know there's a metal pipe sticking out I'll, there i have I a lot of metal mower. i have an old property i have lots of metal pipes what i do is i take a flag and i'll take a dowel spray paint it orange because i don't want to cut my blades either i, I don't have time to be and and we also run into like the, that we also run into he's grazing cattle there and the cattle one of the got a shin on one of them yeah. things. You got a broken leg. I mean, it's just it's a trip hazard. I just There's think no the first reason. thing we need to do is get the markers back. Well, yeah, sure. in the ground, and that way we can. Yeah. We, then I mean, I'm not paying for the markers to go measures. back. I know where they go. I have an idea where they go. Take a tape measure, and you you got to hire an engineer. Go ahead. I mean, it's not an engineer. A survey. A survey. That's what I meant to say. A survey. Basically, the same thing. I do. I work with surveys every day. Does it say anywhere in the thing where he needs to ask permission to do anything to the land? I think so. What it does say from what I'm running remember in the language is that he is able to request the CONCOM us if he wants to do certain work. And you did that, I think, in 2016 for the stone wall in the front of the property. Right. I'm allowed. I bought this as a working farm, so I'm trying to farm oh, the I land. Remember it well. So, if I have to call somebody every three days to ask permission what I could do on my farm, it ain't going to happen. I'm I'm trying to work here. I mean, but we're trying to work with you. I get it, but I haven't. But you're not trying to work with us, though. But I haven't done anything that I've worked against you. Well, I mean, what did I do that was wrong? Well, I think. I think it's the email that. Uh, and and another like problem is you got Metacom in here, who has nothing to do with me or you or the restriction. Why are they coming up to my house once a year? I mean, if you guys have a constant restriction, you guys come up here and look at it. They, Why do they, they have do to have the role? They are the enforcer of the restriction. No, no, they're no not. we are not. They're, we, we have engaged them because they have the expertise and we don't have an agent. This, can you hear me? This is Mike Pinto from Look at it, birds. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what kind of expertise? Okay. Hold, hold, hold on. I want to let I want to let Mike talk for Metacomet. Yeah, yeah. Hi. This is Mike from Metacomet. Um, a couple of things. One, the last question is: We have a uh, at the time this conservation restriction was was recorded. Menden and uh, Metacomet 
developed an MOU, an agreement, where Metacomet's role here is to um, basically in inspect uh, the property approximately once a year, which once a year inspection is like a land trust standard. Metacomet has 12 other CRs that we actually uh, enforce. We visit each one of those once a year. This one, we don't have any enforcement role, but based on that MOU, we're supposed to conduct a site visit once a year, which we have been doing since I think 16, 2016. And part of our protocol is to write up a report uh, uh, that describes what we find during the site visit. And that's what we've done this year. And uh, Carl, if, if you want to share the draft report that I sent, you're certainly welcome to do that. I'm actually kind of, you know, looking for maybe some um, men and men and comments on it, I it before, before I finalize it. So uh, I just want to put that out too. Um, and the other thing, I, I think, um, if you if you look at the CR, um, there's you know, that um, I've been calling it the building envelope, or it's also I think it's called the farmstead, and um, there are certain things you, you can do within that farmstead which are spelt out uh, in the CR um, that are different from the rest of the property. Uh, that's why it, it, it's a building envelope. It's really a, a, also an agricultural, you know, infrastructure envelope. Um, so um, Mark, can, Mark can build barns there. Mark can do pretty much what he wants to do there related to agriculture um, for most things. But um, I do think there's a question about the stone wall. As, as personally, as I read the CR, I think um, all stone walls on the property are protected uh, and, and um, the CR do doesn't make any exceptions for stone walls within the, uh, the farmstead. Um, so I can try to answer questions Otherwise, I'll, I'll just uh, hang on and listen. You know, if you have questions, please ask. Okay. okay. So, so I have, I have up, up on. on. Mark, can, uh, can you go ahead, mute yourself? No. Okay. So in my in my uh, write up, I identified five things, five action items that we would want to work on over the winter. Uh, the first one we discussed is to put in another boundary that would be flush in the ground. Uh, we also, on the site visit, were unclear how far from the farmstead area, how far back in the woods on the uh, fisheries and wildlife property where the wetlands was, so that we could be absolutely confident that your farmstead area did not, was not in the buffer zone yeah. on that other side. So we wanted to make sure that was the case. And if so, whether if you're within the 50 to 100 foot buffer, we would want to basically come up with some sort of determination that you were unable to work in farm activities as long as there wasn't like manure draining down. Uh, so that would be number three, determine, you know, determine what the allowable use would be for there. Um, and then the last one we want to do, and we've been sort of talking about this, is review the CR, review the right to farm bylaw that Menden has, and, and determine are you able to remove the stone walls that got demolished or whatnot, um, and determine so and, and come up with something where both you and the CONCOM have in writing an understanding of what's the allowable use. Yes, you, you, you shouldn't have to come to us every three days for it, but if you're looking and saying, well, I want to go and do another area of fill here that may impact the area outside the farm stand area, you'd work with Leah or someone else and they would, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, Volunteering Leah and she agreed because she is a, yeah. she's a farmer herself and, yeah. and knows about this issues more than anyone else. So uh, at this point, we'll be getting the second uh, the, the the latest report from Metacomet that'll be up to date. We'll be able to review that over the next couple of months, and then if 
we have an agent who's able to work on these issues, they would be getting involved in doing the research on allowable use of, of your, your property. So at this point, I'm basically hoping to take no action at this time. We have the Metacomet report, we've opened a dialogue with you, and then we would continue discussing this over the winter. Yeah. Uh, the first thing to do, it, it would be to <laughs> get new things in the ground, and uh, I would see about having our agent research the best way to do that. I, I yep. agree wholeheartedly with the recommendation. I want to get at who, who's to pay, because you're right, you shouldn't have to pay. It's the town. But I'm thinking it. No, but you took the markers out. I understand. <laughs> I did, but I'm not. I'm not paying to put it back. I'm telling you right now. I would, rather than coming out of our budget, I would think it would be out of the CPA because they're they're getting involved with fences and homeowners, and we've had to hire people as to. Do is, oh, no, go ahead. So, the cheapest and easiest is going to be the firm who did it originally. anyways originally. So that. And yes. that's the first step that needs to go forward. So someone's yep. got to hire that. We'll that figure firm. out what I the price. With that, if we want to make make, a, make that a motion, to go forward, to try to go forward with that. I'll uh, make a motion I'm that uh, we should go forward and hire a firm to reestablish that point, and we should be in communication with Ann Mazar of the Conservation Committee as to fundings to pay for that. Second. Can I can I say something before you make that a motion? Um, first of all, I, I took those out in I think 2017. So I don't understand why it's an issue six years later, seven years later. But being said that, I want to um, before you guys do that, I want to ask for I want to make sure my farmstead, before you spend all this money getting it engineered, is not in wetlands or even close to that. And if it is, I would like to scratch that and make my farmstead on better dry land for further use. Then, I mean, what good is a farmstead building envelope to me if it's in the, side, the swamp down the side of a hill? This, this, this is Mike Panko, Meta Comet. I've walked the property. I'm a conservation commissioner in another town. I know wetlands. There are no wetlands on the farmstead. There are some wetlands on the fish and wildlife property west of the farmstead, but there are no wetlands on your property, on, on the farmstead. You do have a pond uh, uh, elsewhere on the property, but the farmstead itself is high and dry. No, that's good. Yep, and you just can't push into the wet. Well, the, the goal is to make sure that the farmstead area is not within a hundred foot buffer of the wetlands. And that's where we need to work with fisheries and wildlife to see if they've delineated the wetland in the thing to off to your off, down the hill, down the slope from you. But I mean, basically, like I said, when Ann did this, I, I know it was short, sweet and quick, but my building envelope, if you look at it on a 3D, it's the whole north end of it's on ledge. You can see the ledge coming out of the ground. The other end's down the side of a cliff. It's like I, I wouldn't mind having a building area that's level and flat. You know what I mean? Before you spend all this money. Yes, and that's that's what you've ended up having to do with the area around the the, the barn and and that's where the stone right. walls yeah. used to be. You yep. had to flatten them so that you yep. had sufficient clearance to get around and back and, yep. and and establish your working areas. And that is exactly what you need to do in order to run your farm. Yep. Okay. So we have a motion on the table to work with Ann Mazar and the company that did the previous flagging to uh, come up with a install iron pins that that once a, a, a farm friendly way of replacing the pins that that were removed in 2017. Any further discussion? Just a report or what you're looking at that is what did you print? That out? looks like the, the draft, draft from Meadowcon. That's the report. That's the one he said we could share. Oh, okay. You're what, looking for the original. What, I'm, I'm looking for. for have the, the contract. Yes. Oh, that's about that's about some time. That's about 40 that. pages. It's about 40 pages long and it's pretty legal. Do you have it electronically? Yes. It, and it's Will been you send it to me. Yes, I've, I've got that listed. Send Mike link. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Again. <laughs> OK. All right. So any further discussion before we vote? I don't know if you're an email person. But... All for it. OK, all in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Bob, you still there? Yep, bye-bye. Okay, uh, motion passes unanimously. And thank you for coming, Mark. I will, oh, I will read that. So we're, we're getting you out 12, 18 minutes That's late. my but number. Yep, I do. Have okay. a good time. Yep. Call me if you need. Yep. You have any doubts? It's better to, yep. to ask me beforehand than have to come and do all this crap. Yep. All the time. No, I appreciate it. And and one of the reasons nothing's happened since two thousand seventeen is our clerk left. COVID hit, and yep. I haven't had an agent. <laughs> yep. So we're now trying to catch up on this the same way you've heard. We're working with people on the lake and getting getting the lake association involved in in discussions. The, the members of okay the 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 board the select board earlier this year created the lake task force bob sweet is the representative from us the concom the lake nipmuc task association was specifically added as a member of that task force bob who else is on the task force for the health uh, John Dudley is the chairman, and uh, I believe Dan is on it as well. Dan Beyer? Yes. And From the Board of Health. It's funny because none of these people live on the lake, right? Well, Dudley does, isn't he? It is. It, it, well, that's why the Lake Task Force got a seat on it, because this is this is the way that the, basically the town identified that we have silos. The Board of Health has their own view of property on the lake. We have a view of property on the lake. The Lake Task Force and, and you know, Dan Byer and Parks and Recreation. The Slugman created it, so there was a Slugman like Board of Health. Well, I think they're 40 years. I mean, there ain't too many people that's been on that lake for 40 years that lived on there right now. I can tell you that right now. I think it's open to everyone to attend for sure. So it and, should... and the lake task force, one of the questions I've asked is, so do they have a budget? I think it's basically a clearinghouse and a way for them to discuss things so that the individual boards then are working and not at cross purposes. Yep. Okay, well, keep. I, I think that I could help out a lot. This okay, is, well, go to the, go, come to our meetings. I make a motion for Billy Palmer to join the chat. I'm just saying, I, I've never even heard of it until you. Okay. Me that, I was like, uh, well, make a motion, we fill it in. We, <laughs> our, our agendas get posted and you can skim it and say, are we doing anything with Lake Nipmuc or not? Likewise, you can, you can, you can find out when the Lake task force is meeting since it's a town task force board that should be subject to the open meeting law and their meeting should get posted as well. I, I get to go. Yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Thank you. All right. Um, Thank you. Yep. Bye. All right. So those are the two lengthy items we had on the agenda. So I should do my uh, usual late night talk show monologue and zoom my way through the rest of the things. Uh, review correspondence. We got correspondence from Dan Beyer about the hearing next week on the seven year action plan from the open space and recreational plan. This got forwarded into your email. The uh, open space committee has made a number of recommendations that are in their seven year action plan. And uh, did they have they sent us a draft of it? It, yeah, I, they, they sent it to CONCOM and then I forwarded it to you, so it's in your mailbox. Did you get that space one? Yes. It's a spreadsheet listing their proposal. Basically, there's a multi-page document that is on their town website page, and then this is their draft of things they want to do specifically that they're circulating internally, and that is what will be discussed at the hearing next week. Uh, so that's agenda item number two. Uh, agenda item number five, I have good news. Isabella uh, has now passed her background check and her scheduled start date is Monday. Thank you. Her name is Bella. Isabella. Isabella. Uh, let me put her resume up. How many hours? You know what I liked about her? I think she's from here, isn't she? Yes. So maybe she'll stay. <laughs> what's, her, what's her last name? Isabella. He went to Nipah. I, I, I am pulling up her agenda. 
can write her, her resume. I think. Isabella Genova. How do you spell that? G E N O V A. Genova. So she graduated from Nipmuc High School May 2019. She's a youngin. <laughs> and she graduated from U Vermont uh, back in May with a major in environmental science. So her her specialties are um, GIS mapping and um, water water resource water resourcing or some sort. Um, she Champlain, Nantucket. Yeah, she did an internship on Nantucket <laughs> and she worked on <laughs> Nantucket <laughs> Island has the equivalent of they have something that's like the Lake Task Force. It's a it's a it's a volunteer group of citizens and she worked with them. And so she would go to the Nantucket CONCOM meetings listening to her mentor argue about NOIs and OOCs. So she does have some exposure to what we do. Uh, and uh, so uh, that now ties into the training staff. One of the things that we're going to be doing is I'm going to be setting up a meeting with her and um, uh, Leah McDonald, our, our Mass DEP circuit writer. I spoke with her at the MACC conference and said, yep, we hope she's coming on board. So we'll be setting up some video calls where Isabella will get training in how to use Mass DEP, start talking to Susan about how to take all of the paperwork uh, off of Susan's hands, uh, get all the slide decks from the training classes. One of the things in particular that we need to do that Mass DEP can't is specific information on how the met the, the Menden bylaw authorizes the CONCOM to do things that the state regulations do not. So my question for people down at that end of the table is, who wrote the Menden bylaw? Were you involved in that? OK. Uh, we just cut, took it from somebody, some local town. OK. Says there's no. The only difference say that I was in I was led to believe that with our restrictions, we could enforce it. Other than no, it's it's better than that. The 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 default. This is one of the things I learned with taking the training the past two months. The default regulations only prohibit people from doing things in streams and in wetlands. The fact that there's a hundred foot buffer zone is only because we have a bylaw for it. Our bylaw specifically says 25 foot, no disturb, 50 foot, no something else, 100 foot, come and talk to us about it. And so what I'm hoping to do is to find out who else can go through the individual sections of the Menden bylaw and say specifically, this goes be of and beyond what the DEP regulation, 40 pages of regulations do. So I was hoping you would. <laughs> we all do it, compare notes. Okay. My interpretation would be different than that. Okay. Than yours. So what you want us to do yeah. is, is find what's different from the WPA to our bylaws. No, it's 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 or the, the, the mass different. DEP regulations specifically say, you know, here's a resource area, here's what you can do. The Menden bylaws authorize the CONCOM and our agent to also enforce the Wetlands Protection Act in these other areas and allow us to do this additional enforcement activity. So what I'm what I'm looking for is someone besides me who actually knows what they're reading and, and can enforce it. If I can make a suggestion, why don't we schedule uh, a few meetings, whether it's one meeting a month, dedicated that we work as a team, reviewing it. Well, what what minutes of reviewing our homework that we've done in yeah, between meetings? Right. Well, Not what yeah, that, that way there yeah, it it won't fall through the cracks, and I like well, your idea better if 
we devote 15 minutes at every meeting until we feel that we've accomplished the goal that Kyle's looking for. Well, now that I now that I know that no, none of us know exactly what 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 the bylaws are. I'll work with with Isabella on finding someone who can inform us. We read through them, and they're very similar to what the WPA is. It's almost like it's they the, put it's, it's the exact same format, but it authorizes us to do things in addition, which is exactly what local bylaws are supposed to do. Okay, so well, that was my understanding on that meeting too. Is is that the WPA has its set of guidelines? The individual towns custom tailor it to their we wishes. We could make a lot of changes if we wanted to to make it stricter. And if Munden had a had a bylaws committee, then we could go talk to them mm -hmm. about it. Uh, we used to. I think a, a bylaw committee did work on. Yep. Uh, not to change the subject. <clears throat> when you get a moment, can you electronically send me that resume? Oh, so resume. I can yep. Okay. Okay, well, what I did is I sent the link. I didn't send the actual thing as an attachment. All right, um, so the other thing I will be doing about training is I will be, uh, when I set up a external training meeting with Isabella to talk to someone from MassDEP, I'll be listening in too, and I'll send a mail message or a text and a text message out saying, here's the Zoom link for when Isabel is getting trained on something. Uh, I will have her talk to Bill McHenry about how he organized our SharePoint site so she can get an idea on how to handle it. I'll talk to her about her interest in, uh, you know, work with, talk with her and our HR person about her interest in whether she considers this something that she would eventually grow into a full-time position at Menden, or if she just wants to do agent work that's, you know, to a limited extent, or whether she wants to embrace learning how agents would be working. Uh, and, and that ties into what her career goals are. Two questions. How many hours a week and does she have another job or is this her only job? He, he is waitressing which is why she wants to do something with her degree. And I believe it's it's less than 20 hours a week because it's part time. We are not Don't giving avoid benefits. We're right? not we're not giving her benefits. benefits. Yeah, but I think she may be young enough to still be under her parents plan. Probably if she just graduated college. So, so is there room for her to become a full time employee? Do they have some not unless we crack yeah. the budget? Exactly. That's my and, 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 and that's that's the conversation that I've basically been talking to David and Jan saying I'm not getting involved in that. We are paying her a, a relatively high rate. It's so it's closer to $30 an hour than $20 an hour. It's better than waitressing. <laughs> and it's also using her expertise. So so one of the things I will be talking with her about is to say, how much does she want to dive into reading the 40, 50 pages of wetlands uh, mass DEP regulations and our bylaws? How much does she want to get involved in going out on uh, site walks and visits? For example, uh, in January or whenever 23 Cape Road starts work, at some point, we will want to go out on a every couple of weeks to monitor their site. That would be a great thing to have our agent doing. Uh, Deshang, uh, his company every two weeks goes out to Misco Springs. Uh, it would be a great learning for experience for her to go around with Deshang and when, when I went on the site visit, Deshang is talking all this wetland stuff and then Billy, the contractor, and I are saying, you just lost me there. And and, and, I, and he says, oh, OK. Uh, so it's a question of that would be a, an area where she could uh, become better educated out in the field. So I will I will be taking the lead on the training. I understand we also have another person reviewing our old videos and creating minutes, uh, and I will find out what the status of that is. Question. Yeah. So, since she likes to do the GIS stuff, would she be able to flag those markers at the Mnuchin's or? I will let her discuss that with, with the. I think that might be an easy solution. Uh, you know? Just the 20 hours. I would just rather that position rather than. 
two and a half hours, two eight hour days and four hours on the meeting. I think it would be more effective if it was more like four hours more days, but it's because it's going to be boring there eight hours a day. She's going to be sitting in there. By what, herself, I'm so expect, I, I, what I'm expect, what I'm expect, the minimum requirements is that she's in the office at the desk for four hours a week. At least a half day longer if she's interested, and that will allow the public and contractors and, and, and other people. Uh, the other opportunity for growth for her is. The town. Does not have a town wide GBIS thing. She could work with Dylan and the other people to. Get all of our town maps. Uh, she could get our. She could work with the board of assessors and figure out whatever where all our six chapter 61 property is. She could work with Ann Mazar and say, OK, what is the open space committee identified as critical things that we want to keep an eye on and snap up or, or, or otherwise make sure that they're they're being monitored. So there's a number of things that she she might be able to do. I'm hoping that at our next meeting she'll be sitting over there running the video for me. Well, I was getting those markers and should be a licensed slash professional survey. So there's no question about it. So there's no challenges later on. Yeah, the GIS people usually just input their coordinates and stuff. So the survey data. Yeah, it's still going to be a two man team for half a day, but uh, a couple hours. It is what it is. Yeah. You just left them there. Like, and I thought it's like orange discs on the ground in the first year. It's a met. We we saw them w when we went out on the site visit. This is the ground. They're about this tall. And yeah, yeah they really like this. They they, they, they were sharp. They'd cut a cow's leg, and yeah, they're going to wreck his ho his his hay his haying machine. Okay. Um. Sylvan Springs monitoring. This is another chance for me to not talk as chair, but to talk as the person who went on site walk. Um, as I mentioned, I went with uh, with Deshang and uh, the person whose name I can't remember, but I wrote up on an actual site visit. Uh, Deshang prepared a large uh, in, in the trailer. We looked at all of the areas of concern. Um, the the way that I expect this will be going forward is Deshang does not work for us, which I thought he works for contracting company. So he makes recommendations, but they don't have to do them. So the role that the CONCOM has in here is that if Deshang makes a recommendation and the contractor does not carry out, because we are monitoring his site under his order of conditions for the entire subdivision as well as his order of conditions for individual properties, we can ask the contractor, why aren't you doing these things? Uh, and that's what I did when I was out walking the property. And uh, in fact, we did have some follow up on it. One of the one of the reports that Deshang and Francis made is one of the homeowners was dumping leaves into the into the wetlands on the you know the, there's a stream running downhill and it is flagged you know. Do not go in there. There are now grass clippings in there. And the way that works is whoever the homeowner hired just dumped them over there. So now the homeowner has received an official email saying you're not supposed to do that. So if three or four years from now we go and find more grass clippings there, we tell the homeowner you're a repeat offender. You got told not to do this, and here's the email where you got told not to do it. So uh, that's one one of the positive outcomes of our now paying more attention to this area. Uh, part of when, when we did our first site visit last month, a lot of the development that is now underway is taking place in Upton. So uh, at some point we'll meet with our or, or our agent will talk to the agent in Upton to say, are you OK with all the stormwater that's running downhill or do you want us to do something about it up here? And uh, we so we'll be able to reach out and 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 make sure that that kind of thing is going on. 
Uh, so overall, I'm comfortable with the level of interaction and oversight that we now have on that property. Any other questions about my site visit? Nice job. Yep. Okay. Well, Chang is a wonder, and we should not be averse to doing that on any big project. Yes. Uh, De Chang did the initial hydrological study. He's the person who decided where the stormwater basins would be, how the roads would be working, all that stuff. So he's continuing to, to do that function. And that's why, I mean, yeah, we could hire a peer review, but he's the expert on it and he has all of the subject matter knowledge. All right, uh, agenda item seven, late NITMUC task force. So Bob, hey, uh, you, hey, you Carl. said- Carl. Oh yeah. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I just I didn't see myself on the agenda, and I didn't want to keep hanging on for the rest of the call if, if I wasn't going to be brought up. This is Kyle over at 90 Park Street. Um, mm -hmm. I was trying to close the order of conditions on the property, and I think I had called in uh, last meeting and the meeting prior. Um, okay. And I'm just not sure if if um, if any progress has been made on on that. Okay, Susan's here. Susan, didn't you? What's your status working on that? I. Uh, does it ring a bell actually? Okay. Was what, was what, I, um, what problem? Okay. 90 about? Park Street. Yeah, 90 Park Street. I had I waited for the agenda to come out when I saw the agenda and I, that I wasn't on. And I had sent over an email, I think it was on Tuesday or Wednesday um, of this week, just to kind of follow up on the um, info I had sent from a couple meetings ago. Um, I think I had sent it to Carl and then just the, the standard kind of conservation. Yep, there I am there. Hold on, buddy. I'll uh, show you in one minute. Okay. Yeah, I, I added that a couple. Okay. Yeah, I, th I thought we talked about it, and I'm and we I said that we were going to. Okay. Well, that would be why that that's the disconnect. That's so probably that, yeah. That's probably where I rings no bells, but I can do it. I'm actually um, working for my home office tomorrow, or I'll be in the area. We're on Park Street. Is it? Uh, it's almost on the Uxbridge line. Yep, and you're pretty much in the middle, not much ordering. Why did you have an OOC? I'm I'm not sure to be honest with you. We bought the lot from um from some uh from somebody that had bought it prior to us and they had done some clearing and then they decided to not build on it. So I'm not really sure why we had an order of conditions, but it came with the with the property when okay. we purchased it. So what's that gray line in ninety that does an L kind of there. Yeah. The there. the property kind of dropped off. Um there was kind of a, a, a grade change. That's, that's there. topological. Yeah. So again, everything's everything's established. The, you know, the grass is grown and everything's been paved and all the site work is complete. Just looking to kind of get that closed out. Okay. Well, uh, now that Susan, you, now that we have Susan's attention, she can she can work with you and check. Susan can check her email and get your phone number and, and talk with you about it. Can we Great. make a motion to authorize Susan to give the go ahead? Uh, okay. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve closing out the order of condition for 90 Park Street. Any further discussion? Subject to Susan's approval. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. All right, I'll give you a call tomorrow to um, find out the details and what it, whatnot. That says unanimously. Thanks so much. Okay, sorry, sorry, I didn't notice you, but that's okay. I once I get it. a sorry to interrupt. Once I get a clerk, I'll be looking at the Zoom call instead of having to go back and forth and put documents up, and then I'll be able to I see hear you. this. I hear you. I appreciate All it, right. Carl. Thank you. Okay, so. Uh, Lake Association, uh, Lake Lake Task Force. Yep, that's you. So I reached out to Dan Byer, and um, we had discussed that the water, the low, median, and high water mark, uh, some kind of gauge. Uh, we're thinking somewhere near the beach so that it can be accessible, somewhere that it can be visible so it can be monitored. And then we're thinking of reaching out to engineering and seeing if they have the historic median water level 
so that we can gauge high, medium, and low water, put it on this gauge, and that way there we can we can keep track on a weekly, monthly, or or biannually, what however it be, um, method of keeping track of a lake. So that should beavers make dams uh, and the water level goes up, we'll know uh, that that's happening. Okay, so uh, you'll continue to work with Dan on, if, if you come back with a proposal on how much it will cost and where it will go, then we can have a discussion about whether it's Parks and Recreation, CONCOM, and then decide who's going to pay for it and if necessary, coordinate with the Lake Task Force and the Board of the Select Board. Okay. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about uh, the Lake Task Force is something that um, Bob and I talked about when we went to the MACC conference. Uh, I had an, I had an opportunity to specifically ask one of the specialists. So we got a lake and the lake is subject not only to the Wetlands Protection Act, but also the Great Pond uh, Chapter 90 or 91, I forget which. So where do we get someone who can tell us what the regulations are for a Great Pond? And he said, well, just find a wetland specialist who also knows Chapter 90. So what I will be asking the Lake Association to do is First, we find out whether uh, DeShang or any of the other people we've worked with in the past are also familiar with Great Pond regulations. And if not, then find out how much they cost. And then maybe it isn't the CONCOM paying for it, it would be the Lake Task Force because it's not the CONCOM WPA stuff. This will very specifically address the questions we've been having the last six months of, so what's allowable in terms of putting in a dock? And under the Great Pond regulations, and how does that synergize with the WPA regulations on what's going on? So I'm very glad to hear there are people out there who will be able to give us those answers. It's a question of finding out, it's picking someone and paying for it. Somebody like a surveyor, who, it, like Lake Webster. It's going to be. Sigmund, it's it's going to be a wetland scientist who also knows pond regulations. Just like we could go out and find someone who knows the WPA, the uh, the, the wetland regulate the DEP regulations. There are also people who know the Great Pond regulations, and we need someone who does both of them who can give us definitive, well, actually give us and the Lake Task Force the definitive answers. Chapter 90 in Mass General Law. Yeah. Refers to the Great Pond Rail. Yes. It's docks, docks and water. It'll be, do it'll be recreational use docks, things like you're allowed to do 50 feet or not more than 10% of the shoreline or something along those lines. Well, again, not that I'm some kind of computer wizard by any means, but I believe you can go online and pull up the Mass General Laws. <laughs> yeah, pull I've read up. them. Bob's read them. It's 40 pages, and sometimes they contradict themselves. Public Waterfront Act. And it's just as much sausage as the WPA is. And in addition to the statutory law, there's probably the equivalent of the Mass DEP 80 pages of regulations that govern it and, and break things out further. We haven't read the MCT yet, then I guess, huh? Right. And so so what we what we may end up having is at some point we may want to have Menden adopt a great pond. Bylaw specific the same way we've adopted a Wetlands Protection Act bylaw. But again, I'm all dumping this on Bob, and maybe our new agent is interested in looking at this as well because of her background chapter in wallet. Yes, correct. chapter 91. So this is this is the act that says that the public has high tide, low tide access and can walk along the shoreline. 
And, and it also talks about uh, recreational use, the fact that um, you cannot obstruct other people from using their boats by putting up a boom, things like that. And, and we don't care about them because we're the CONCOM, but the Lake Task Force will be interested in, in some of those as well. And in that, it also says that docks need to be permitted. Yep, and, and, and then the question. Through the fe it has to go through the state, not just the town. Yeah, so that's another thing someone said it during the conference that we'd want to follow up on. And what may end up happening is the select board designates the CONCOM as the appropriate people to work with the state on permitting Great Pond docks. I don't know. Well, we'll that's that 30 or 40 docks that people have that they don't have have a permit. They'll, that'll go down well. That's, well, it'll be interesting. Yep, I, I see an exciting life for Bob in politics. All right, any further discussion about uh, the lake? All right, moving on to agenda item eight, Meadowbrook Woods, discuss site visit that Leah did on Thursday. Yep, um, I was able to see the Fragmites. It's probably about a 10 by 10 patch, and it's going to be a little hard to get out there because it's through um, kind of a boggy wetland there. But um, I think we can wait until next year. I don't think it's going to get, it's bordered by cattails. So um, that will keep the frog mites at least somewhat in good behavior. Um, so if we want to wait until next year, I think we'll be fine. So that would be next fall, not next spring? October, right? It has to be done before the frost or something, or but not after, I don't know, let's be certain. I'll, I'll wait for the recommendation on that, but for me, I think it's probably good to do it twice if you were going to do it once when it after it's come up, you know okay. what I mean? And then once again in the fall, and that should take care of it. Water and wetland will send us an estimate for what they want to do in January. I'll dump it in your lap and you can negotiate things like that. Yep, I did also take a look at a few. Um, Bill Dakai, he's a, a volunteer with the, um, he volunteers a lot with the, um, trustees and such. He's the bike guy. Yeah, he is the bike guy. And he wanted bike? to um there are, road bikes on the oh. town land. He does a lot of work keeping our trails open. He does, yeah. Um there's a few places he wants to put in some bog bridges just because it's very muddy. Um and so we took a look at those locations and he's gonna get us a map and draw it out. Um it's not anything that will be damaging or um you know we're yeah. not going to be disturbed. No, they're good there. stewards of yeah. that land. Yeah. So. And another interesting thing I found at the conference is trail improvements are a permissible use of doing going into the wetlands and doing something. Yeah. As long as you're not putting in impervious pavement and you're not and, and it's not too wide. And and those are the kind of details that are in the regulations. Um, width do we go by? It's in the actual regulations. No, oh, I'm saying, is there a number associated? Yes, and and since I don't have a, I'm, I'm not on a first name basis with the Mass DEP regulations, I'm not going to say what the number is and get it wrong. I'll just say in the regulations, it says how wide you can get, it, what, the, what the permissible use is. Yeah, thank you. Like Thanks, Supremacy Clause of the Constitution. <laughs> OK. So that's that's yet yet another thing for the agent to 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 think about over the next couple of weeks, uh, working on whatever those trail improvements might Do you be. Do not scare her, though. <laughs> slowly. Yeah. Or scary. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that when we get to item 11. All right, uh, review CONCOM finances. There have been no new bills or anything I've seen in our mail slot or dropped on my desk. And again, once we're going to have to be putting together a budget, budget season has started. Yep. I would recommend that we ask for more money in our training budget or the new members and the uh, administrative staff that we're going to be having. Right there. Yep. Okay. So uh, that's something that we should 
keep putting on the agenda till we so it don't slip through the crack mm -hmm. and we're up against the wall and we got to throw numbers at a at a dartboard for the budget okay so i will add on to there review finances and prepare a budget all right now we come to something that's going to be very legalistic um Another benefit of my training, the MACC training, is at some point they said, oh yeah, you can sign mass DEP documents, OOCs, RDAs, ANRADs, you name it, you can do it electronically. And one of the people at the conference very helpfully wrote up this very long document saying exactly the steps you're supposed to go through to make this happen. So, so on the agenda for tonight, is the first part of this process. And so I will now say exactly what I need to say. Uh, we will now conduct a roll call vote on the following motion. To hereby recognize and accept the provisions of MGL C 111G regarding electronic signatures and that its members will henceforth execute documents either with electronic signatures or with wet ink signatures and that both will carry the same legal weight and effect. Do I have someone who will make that motion for me? Is there a second? I'll second. I need a second before we I'll have second. I know, but I need a second before we have discussion. So now we have discussion, your question. We'll be able to read these documents and have time and, you know, yes. wait to do research if we need to. Um, no one's anything before you sign something, you can research it. Just yes. how electronic is as formal as what it what this will mean is that, for example. If we were to vote on a document tonight, Bob would be able to sign it electronically instead gotcha. of having to okay. have Susan drive over to his house and get gotcha. his signature on okay. a piece of paper. How, how does that physically happen? What ink? You computer? No, no, no. Sign it. Okay. Here, so, okay, so. Well, I'm not quite sure. Here, 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 here's the way the process would work. After we finish doing the initial setup, and I'll describe what that is. The way the electronic signature works is someone can log in to something. Susan, why don't you tell us what you log in oh, and do? Sorry, I was talking. I think you thought you were talking about submitting forms to the EDP. No, no. Okay, there would perfect. be some other way to log into the Menden Town website using your Menden account and open up a PDF file and using Adobe Acrobat or something else, the same way you sign anything else electronically. You it knows who you are, you yeah. click it, and it says, yes, I trust that. Now, in order to be able to do that at a future meeting, there are six or seven steps that you have to go through in sequence. Having a roll call vote on this motion is step number one. This document goes through bullet by bullet all of the additional steps that may happen. You have to generate a piece of paper form and have it signed and done by the town clerk. The town clerk has to do something official with the registry so that the registry knows that this electronic signature is now valid for when they attach an OOC to somebody's deed. There's a whole lot of other steps that have been done in here. Uh, there are a number of other towns that have done this across Massachusetts. We haven't because we're small. So I wanted to start this process. And then we will start working our way through the rest of the, pro the steps. Good work, Carl. So roll call vote. So any further discussion? All right, we will conduct a roll call vote. Bob Sweet. Here. Do you vote yes or no on this motion? Oh, I yeah, I think uh, no, just, is a great idea. Just, just vote yes or no. Yes. Susan Kahalen. Uh, Leah Waiting. Yes. Uh, Peter Coffin. Peter Coffin votes aye. Mike Amandalia. No. Okay. Carl Hummel. Yes, although I'm the chair. So uh, the, the vote is five to one with one absent. The motion passes. All right. Uh, so the next step is 
documented uh, and I will be working with our new agent to go through the rest of the process. Uh, there is a folder on the town website I've created called online signing, which has uh, the procedure for allowing Conservation Commission members to do electronic signatures, as well as the certification to vote that we will be working with the town clerk on uh, on doing. All right, agenda item 11 set November December meetings. The fourth Thursday in thanks in November is Thanksgiving. The first Tuesday in December is three weeks after that. So if we take no other action, our next meeting will not occur until five weeks from today. So my question for the committee is, do we want to have a meeting sooner than five weeks from now? Do we anticipate anything coming up that needs to be um, addressed at that point, or is it just maintenance? I have received nothing that indicates that hmm, is there's any large projects or anything else, but then we wouldn't know until they actually submitted it. Well, do you and want any, to think about the 30th, Carl? Well, I'm I'm whole, I, I'm I'm the chair. I'm not going to venture an opinion on this one. I'm going to ask other people to look at their personal calendars and say, do they want to try scheduling a meeting sooner than five months from five weeks from now? And or I'd vote maybe just temporarily for the month of December rather than second and fourth. Why don't we go first and third Thursdays? That would solve the problem of Christmas. And then we'd be a week earlier, so it would only be four weeks. It would only be four weeks. And oh, we have a, our new person. We should be meeting. Working. What's, what's November 30th? Is that a Thursday? It is. So that's the other option. We could meet. So I like Bob's idea, November 30th. Well, it would be the 28th of December. Works for me, whatever. I'll 30. be um, on vacation. So wait, this is November we're talking about? You want me to? Zoom in from the beach right. or something. I we're talking about the fifth Thursday <laughs> with the margarita. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> and then after that, so we have a meeting on the thirtieth. Then normally yeah. second and fourth, but uh, all right. So so the proposal is to meet three weeks from now, and then two weeks after that. Which what day will that be in December? The fourteenth. Then we can probably get by not having the 28th. December 14th would be our regularly scheduled meeting and it would happen two weeks after November 30th. And it would be the 28th. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Good. All right. So um, what I what I will do is I will see about scheduling a meeting. Off cycle for November 30th and not have the meeting on Thanksgiving Day. November 30th and December 14th. OK, OK. All right, um, Bob, your mic is pretty loud. OK, last. Last open item training budget, uh, the mat and Mass Association of Conservation Commissions has completed their fall teach-a-thon. Uh, I successfully got their certification, yay, which also gave me a free, which which also gave me a free uh, one-year subscription to their online handbook. Um, Share it. No. <laughs> oh. If you if you think you want one, then you can bill the town for it. Uh, one of need another one. I have my book. Yeah, well, you have to pay for it each year. So uh, one of the things I will be doing is uh, using those resources when we're training Isabella up. Uh, the so so what this means is that for our November thirtieth meeting, I will meet with the town treasurer and find out what the reimbursement procedure is 
Uh, Bob will be asking for reimbursement for travel expenses to the conference that we went to. Me, Susan, uh, sorry, me, Leah, and Bob will be figuring out which classes we attended and then divvying up the the uh, um, the classes that we've gone to. And in addition, I will be talking with Isabella on what training she would be interested in taking now and in the spring. So uh, the first pass would be to uh, determine what reimbursements will authorize uh, for the period between July 1st and no, December and November 30th. And then we will see what training budget we reserve for Isabella and other people when the next round of MACC training happens or if there are other classes that they're interested in attending. Plan. All the yeah, reason to put our budget together. Uh, ask and receive more money in our training budget. Yes, and I'm quite comfortable going to the finance committee and they say, why do you want $2,500 in training? I'll say because we have two new CONCOM members and, a, and an agent and uh, uh, we, we need to get more specialized training in order to carry out our responsibilities and obligations. Town yeah. just. $700,000. Well, town meeting took some of that and, and, and moved town it. meeting spent a lot of it. They also put uh, money into stabilization and money into. Uh, it's the account that we buy equipment out of. OK, uh, two final notes uh, about town meeting. The town meeting decided to authorize paying for electronic keys for this building and across the street. So everyone who's interested in getting in here or, or you know or whatnot, we would be able to have a way to do that that doesn't involve a physical key. Yay. Uh, the other one is the town authorized to spend 200,000 or so of CPA money to do the do the Vandersloss uh, conservation restriction. So um, we will be working with Metacomet. This is one where both Metacomet and the town will be legally responsible for doing stuff. So we'll have yet another a, yet a third way of, of, that we have to deal with CRs. The reason why the CONCOM, the town has to be involved in the CR is because we're spending town money. And we're also spending Metacomet money because they're, they're putting up some of their own money. So that's why both of us will be able to do and, and responsible for enforcement. Uh, there's a meeting this Sunday that Metacomet's holding an open house. Uh, I'll be going Sunday afternoon and, and hobnobbing and smooching with them. And I'm sure that will be one of the major topics of discussion. Not that's on the agenda, but I was kind of glad that I supported the idea of a disc golf on town owned land, but someone's got to take more responsibility because did it pass? No, it didn't. No, it went it, down big time. It did not pass for and and I believe part of the resistance was uh the this is the one item that the finance committee did not recommend. They didn't turn it down. They said it was 2-2. One of the members of the finance committee speaking on their own behalf said that it was bad process as well as he didn't want to spend the money. His his point was this needed to not happen at a special town meeting. Kathy Schofield's response is the disc golf survey people do stuff in the fall. So if we didn't authorize it now, they'd lose six months. And I don't think that was a compelling enough argument. No, and the, the issue I have is it's active recreation. So yes. not all of our open space lends itself to that. Well, that's going to give up. You well, are cutting trails in the woods. But that's and, why they wanted to spend the $10,000. Yeah, and I can see at the Menden Forest, uh, may, yes. But it, how, it how many people were at the special town meeting? It was 130. 130. Yeah, it was good. There was a very good turnout. Uh, the the uh, 
Vandersloss CR needed two thirds because it's acquiring tangible property and it was like 101 to, to 28 something. So it did pass uh, convincingly. Uh, I did get up and speak on behalf of the CONCOM saying that we voted to approve this and on the basis of preserving the historic rural character of Menden and because it is adjacent to two other conservation parcels, the the farm just north of it on North Avenue and also bordering um, uh, the the, Mil the Hopedale property. Uh, the other one of the other major selling points is that it is within walking distance of the middle school and the middle school is saying that yes, they are interested in doing that. I didn't say anything, but the middle school right now is having to come over onto my property and and the and and um, the other properties there, and it's very steep and rugged and not very well done. So if they're able to go on to that property, which is nice and rolling it open and do their 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 all day excursions there, it'll be a lot healthier for the kids. Yeah. Well, that that would that would fit under items not reasonably anticipated because the town meeting was only Monday night and that was after I got the agenda ready. So anything else before we adjourn? We're going to sign the 90. OK, period. yes, Be before you before you leave, uh, sign exactly. sign something that Susan is going to print out for us. But that's outside. Right. That can be done outside the meeting. Just on the meeting. Yeah, I was just thinking, wait a minute, we could just sign it right now and I can prepare it for him tomorrow. And and if only we had virtual signatures, then Bob could. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you only need three signatures, right? You guys are all leaders. You need four for a quorum. Probably a quorum. All right, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Passes unanimously. See you on November 30th. Have a great night. Thank you, Jason. You too. You got it. See ya.